Oh, probabilities are just about everywhere. From quantum mechanics to the distribution of grays. All right, so what we're going to study in this video is probabilities from the point of view of calculus. And by the way, you can see how useful the Feynman lectures on physics are. But uh, in fact, Feynman loved drumming, so I'm sure he'd be totally fine with that. All right, so let's start with an example. Suppose that you place a call to, I don't know, Shaw Cable. So one thing you may want to know is the probability that the waiting time is, say, less than one minute. So mathematically, we would denote that as P for probability that capital T, say, the waiting time is between zero and one minute. And now we can define an object, which is called a probability density function. So what is this? This is a function, P of t. So a probability density function is a function p of t over some domain. So in this case, the domain would be t greater or equal to zero because the waiting time could be anything above zero minute, such that this probability is given by the area under the curve. So in other words, the probability that t is between zero and one would be given by the integral between zero and one of the probability density function. Now, once you have a probability density function, you can ask other questions. So, for example, I could ask, well, what is the probability then that the waiting time is greater than two minutes? So this would be denoted as the probability that t is greater or equal to two, and that would be given by the area under the curve, which in this case would be the integral between two and infinity, so the improper integral, because the waiting time here can be anything greater than two minutes. All right, this is all very cool, but let's be a little more explicit. Suppose that the probability density function in my example is given by the following function, two times e to the minus two t. Then I can actually calculate these probabilities very explicitly. For example, the probability that the waiting time is less than one minute is given by the integral between zero and one of two e to the minus two t dt, which is just minus e to the minus two t between zero and one which is minus e to the minus 2 plus 1, which is approximately equal to 0 0.86. So what that says is that there's 86% of the calls that will be answered before uh, one minute waiting time. So this is definitely a bad uh, probability density function for a call place to shock cable, because I don't know if you've ever called shock cable, but it will definitely take more than one minute before your call is answered. All right. And, but I could also calculate the probability here that the waiting time is greater or equal to 2. That would be now the improper integral between 2 and infinity of the same probability density function. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral. All right, I can calculate this. So the antiderivative as before is minus e to the minus 2t between 2 and b. So I end up with the limit as b goes to infinity of minus e to the minus 2b plus e to the minus 4. Now the limit as b goes to infinity of e to the minus 2b is 0. So I end up with 1 over e to the 4, which is approximately equal to something very, very small, 3.77 times, I don't know, 10 to the minus 11, I think. So what that says is that the probability that the waiting time is greater than two minutes is extremely small. Again, that just says that this is a very bad probability density function for a call place to shock it. Now there's another question you can ask. What is the probability that the waiting time is greater or equal than zero minute? Well, if you think about it for a little bit, this better be 100 percent, right? Because otherwise that means that some calls are not answered at all, which doesn't make any sense. So in other words, what we're saying here is that the probability that t is greater or equal to zero, which is equal to the integral from zero to infinity, so in other words, the integral over the whole domain of the density function, must be equal to one. If that's not true, then p of t cannot be a probability density function. So that gives us something called the, something called the normalization condition for probability density functions, which is the statement that if you take any probability density function, 
which is defined over some domain a to b. Here a and b could be infinite, in which case, of course, a closed interval would be an open interval. Then the integral of the density function over its all whole domain is always equal to 1. If that's not true, then it's not a probability density function. So if I ask you to show that something is a probability density function, what you need to show is that the integral of that function over its whole domain is exactly equal to 1. Now, if I look back at my previous example, where the probability density function was given by 2 e to the minus 2t, I can now check that indeed this is a probability density function. So what I want to do is integrate over the whole domain, which I took to be positive t in that case, and show that this is equal to 1. All right, so this is as before the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b. So I get the limit as b goes to infinity of minus e to the minus 2t between 0 and b, which is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of minus e to the minus 2b plus 1. And that limit here is 0 as before. So I end up with exactly 1. So this was a good choice for a probability density function. Now, given a probability density function, there's a lot of things you may want to know. For example, here, we may want to know what the average waiting time is. So how do you calculate that? Now, this is different from calculating the average value of a function, which we saw earlier this semester, because here we're interested in, in the average value of a quantity, which is described by a probability density function. But we can certainly calculate that. It turns out that the average value, which is also called a mean, mu of a quantity described by a probability density function over some domain, is given by the integral over that domain of the probability density function times t times dt. So if we go back to our favorite example concerning the waiting time when you call Shaw cable, then the probability density function was given by 2 times e to the minus 2t with domain given by all positive times. And in this case, the average waiting time will be given by evaluating the integral over the domain, so from 0 to infinity, of t times the probability density function and I will leave the steps here as an exercise that amounts to using integration by parts to evaluate this integral, and the result you will get is exactly one half, which says here that the average waiting time should be half a minute or 30 seconds. Now clearly that shows that this is a very bad model for the waiting time when you call Shaw cable, because I can tell you by experience that the average waiting time will be a lot more than 30 seconds. All right, so this is all very cool, but why is that the right formula to calculate the mean of a probability density function? Well, let me try to give you a justification. So I'll do it only when the domain of the density function is a closed interval, a to b, but to do it for an in infinite interval, all you have to do is take the limit as a or b goes to plus or minus infinity, but the proof is really the same, so I can focus on this particular case here. And for concre concreteness, let's keep thinking of this density function as controlling the waiting time when you call, say, Shaw cake. All right, so I have my density function defined over this domain, and I'm going to divide the domain into a bunch of rectangles of equal width. So this, the right end point of the first one I call t1, then t2, all the way to tn, so I, I divide into n rectangles, the width is delta t, and then I know that delta t will be equal to b minus a over a little n. Okay, so the first thing I can ask it was, is what is the probability that a call gets answered in one of these intervals, say ti minus 1 to ti. Well, this will be given by the area under the curve, which is really given by the area of the rectangle. So it's well approximated by the value of the function, the height of the rectangle, which is pti times the width delta t. And when I send delta t to 0 with the number of rectangles to be infinite, this will become a precise calculation. Okay, now next let's pick a sample of, say, capital N people calling. Okay, then you can ask, what is the number of calls answered in this interval? So in ti minus 1, well, if you have N people calling and the probability is given by P of ti times delta t, then the number of people uh, that will uh, have their call answered in that interval will be equal to n times the probability, p of ti times delta t. Okay, then the next step is to uh, 
calculate the total time that is waited by these people. So the, this is the number of people whose calls are answered in there. The total time waited will be given by the number of people times the time they wait. So it's going to be well approximated by ti, the right end point of the interval, times the number of people. And that gives me the total time waited by these people. And finally, I can calculate the total time waited by all the people. So what I do is just add up the total time waited by people whose calls got answered in each of the intervals. So I end up with the sum from i equals 1 to little n of this expression, ti capital N p of ti times dot t. And finally, I can calculate the average waiting time. So if this is the total time, then the average waiting time will be given by the total time divided by the number of people that call. So it's 1 over n times this expression, but the n cancel, the capital N cancel, so I end up with this expression here for the average time, average waiting time. All right, that's cool. And finally, I take, as always, the limit where I send the number of interval to infinity, which is equivalent to sending, sending the width of the rectangles to zero. That turns the sum into a, the limit of a Riemann sum, which becomes an integral. And that tells us that the average waiting time becomes the integral from A to B of t, p of t, dt, which is exactly the formula that we had for the mean of the probability density function. All right, so let me end with a brief summary of what we've seen. So if p of t is a probability density function, either defined over a closed interval a to b or some infinite interval, then first we know that p of t must be normalized. So that's just a statement that the sum of all probabilities must be equal to 1. So in other words, the integral of p of t over its domain of definition must be precisely equal to 1. So if you have a function and you want to know whether it's a good candidate to be a probability density function, what you want to do is evaluate the integral of that function over its domain and show that it's precisely equal to 1. All right, so if you have such a function now, then the probability that the quantity of interest t is between two points c and d in your uh, interval, in your domain, is always going to be given by the area under the curve, which is the integral of p of t between c and d. And the mean of the probability density function is given by the integral of t times p of t over the domain of definition. Now, there are other things that are interesting to study when you have a probability density function. For example, you may want to calculate the median or the standard deviation. So these are all interesting things, and we're going to see how they're defined and what they mean in class.